Welcome to We Are Soccer. Today I'm joined by Michigan State University women's head coach, Jeff Hosler. Coach, you guys, big congratulations. Your program just won the Big Ten title for the first time in program history. It's an absolute accomplishment, incredible feat, especially because it's your second year in charge of the program. So big congratulations and thank you for joining us today. Craig, thanks so much. Uh, first, appreciate you having us on, uh, having me on to talk about, about our program and, and the year we've had. Uh, it's been, been a remarkable ride. Uh, so thrilled for this group. Uh, I, I mean, elation, joy, uh, all those positive emotions are certainly flowing over here in East Lansing. I, I can imagine. I saw the I saw some of the video. I saw some of the pictures when you guys finally clinched the title. It is it's amazing. It was so fun to watch. Obviously, myself being a Michigan State alumni, uh, I couldn't be more proud and so happy for the program uh, and the soccer program in general. Uh, you guys have amassed 14 wins, one loss, and three draws this season. I don't care what league you're playing in, what division, whatever it is, that is an amazing record. And you guys have done it in the Big Ten in Division One. It That's incredible, I've got to say. How have you been able to, to set the, the team up and keep them so focused throughout the year? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and I think you're spot on. Uh, I've coached it all. I've coached Division Three at Alma, Division Two at Grand Valley, and now Division One here in Power Five. And man, winning college soccer games is really tough. The parity across the board, the level of talent across all divisions, all levels is incredible. Um, it's a, uh, you know, soccer is also a funny sport sometimes, you know, like the ball can bounce one way or the other, but I, I can say with a lot of confidence that I think we've, we've deserved the results we've had, um, you know, throughout the course of play throughout the course of the season. Uh, I, I think what's really special about this group is their ability to come back the next time, give their best effort. Uh, it's one thing that we talk about all the time. You know, we started in August after our first exhibition, we played really well. Um, we put up a lot of goals. Uh, and one of the things I talked to the team was that, you know, this isn't a, like, we got to strive to to have success and then, and that earns the opportunity to do more that earns the opportunity to come back more focused, more prepared, uh, play in bigger moments. And they've really adapted that philosophy and that idea this year, you know, young people today, especially, you know, everyone wants instant gratification. They want to be able to have success and take a day off uh, those different things. So um, they want to come back. You know, uh, I pulled in the parking lot, we train three to five. Uh, I pulled in the parking lot today and I saw seven of our kids out on the pitch uh, getting some extra reps in, get some reps on their own. Uh, that's just how these kids are wired. Uh, they want more. They want to be the best they can. And uh, for all the, the five top 20 wins we had this year, honestly, it's the ability to come back the next day and get the wins against those teams that, that maybe you're supposed to or externally people right. believe you're supposed to be uh, to come back, play well and get results on those days, too. That's incredible. I love the fact that the players are getting in there, doing, getting extra reps, getting on the field, doing extra weight room, doing extra because that's what it takes. These days, everybody's good. Everybody has a little bit of a competitive nature, but it's the players that put in that extra, extra little bit of work that really make it make a program, make themselves succeed. So that's great to hear. Something else you touched upon was sometimes in soccer, unlike a lot of other sports, uh, things don't go your way, or you could be the best team on the field. And as coach, I used to play for coach Baum. He used to say the soccer gods did not shine on us today. I think you guys with the work ethic you have and the way you've played, the soccer gods don't stand a chance. You guys just steamroll teams and do so well outplaying teams. Is that due to the fact that players are getting in early, putting in extra reps and putting in that extra work? Well, I look, I, how many coaches have talked about soccer gods and Joe Baum being the legend he is, as long as he'd been around, it probably all derived from him. So uh, I, I agree with that philosophy. You know, I, I've used that exact term in the past before with our team. Uh, you know, I, I think sometimes your own luck or your own destiny is created from some of those moments. Um, and there's no question we're a team built on like commitment and work ethic and toughness, grit. Like those are key words that we talk about and define all the time within our program. So I think when you play within that type of context, yeah. uh, things tend to go your way. Uh, we play a lot of passion and play a lot of heart. Uh, I think we have a group that's all in. Um, we have players, you know, that like, this has been an interesting transition for us because uh, to come in last fall and jump to an undefeated non-conference schedule to win five games in the big 10 and finish with 10 wins in, in year one, um, we had a lot of players last year that were starting playing 80, 90 minutes in a match. Hmm. And now as our, our team has more depth, um, it's deeper from top to bottom in terms of talent. It's better in the top end talent this year on the roster. 
you know, we have some players uh, that last year started or played a lot of minutes and, and their, you know, their minutes have been reduced or they're coming off the bench. And those are the kids that are really driving this because those players uh, being all in still recognizing the success of the team, uh, motivating those players in front of them, uh, continually working to grind to get better themselves. I mean, all of those things really push the team forward. So I've always found when, you, when you've got your very best players on your team that have the highest work ethic, it's easy to pull everyone else along. Yep. But a lot of times it's those kids also on the back end or in that middle group that aren't, aren't settling for that or becoming complacent saying, oh, well, it's her role, you know, maybe next year. They're grinding every day to still be the best player they can be, but most importantly, the, be the best teammate. Uh, that's that's great to hear. Absolutely great to hear. And last year, you guys made the Big Ten tournament. This year, you've made the Big Ten tournament as the number one seed. So actually, I, I looked it up for the second time in 10 years, you've made the program has now made the Big Ten tournament. And this year, you've got the number one defense in the nation. You've only allowed seven goals. Is that where your team's built from? Are you are you building out of the back moving forward? You're more concerned about stopping goals, making sure you shut down the other team, and then just letting your creative players do what they need to do up top. But it's based on defense. Is that what I'm is that what I'm picking up here? Yeah, Craig, we're probably the anomaly or uh, you know anom anomaly in college soccer right now. Um, I, I think college soccer goes through these ebbs and flows of being really direct. Mm -hmm. uh, then it becomes possession oriented. I, you know, look, I, we, I tell us with recruits all the time, every coach says they're possession oriented, but that means something different to you and I and, and anybody else. For me, knocking the ball around two, three times in the back and then always smashing it forward in a channel is not possession soccer. Uh, one of the things that I think is really important in the game is, yes, we are built on our defensive foundation. Um, to only concede seven goals through 18 matches is, is pretty incredible in and of itself, uh, the way the game is played today. Uh, but above and beyond that, like, I, I think it's really critical. You have possession and have sustained possession to be able to take this thing out of the attack. My learned this from my college coach. If we have the ball, they can't have, they don't have it. They can't score. And so sometimes your best defense is the way you approach your attack. So we're very meaningful in our possession. Uh, our goalkeeper has not punted uh, outside of the last five minutes of a match uh, when, when you're playing game situations. So everything is a build out. Uh, we've played some of the best high press teams in the country, Arkansas often presses with four or five, six players high. Mm -hmm. We still build out and find overloads. Um, we're comfortable playing possession in our own box uh, with numbers around the ball. So we really try to bring numbers, uh, bring numbers to us so that we can play around uh, or beyond them and then get after it. So you have to have the right makeup to do that. Obviously we have an incredible goalkeeper with her feet, Lauren Kozel, uh, the very best goalkeeper in the country. And in, in my opinion, uh, but above and beyond that, we have midfielders, uh, we have strikers that are comfortable coming into half spaces, picking up balls, going on the dribble and having a lot of combination play. So, yeah, our offense has been overshadowed uh, by our incredible defense. But I think any offense would when you've only conceded seven goals. Uh, but at the same time, I think we're at 34 goals on the year, which is uh, a stark increase and, and one of the top offenses in the Big Ten. Absolutely. You have absolutely changed that program around. As you said, for the first time, I think in program history, you've got several players who are being recognized nationally and first in their position or in offense or defense or goalie. So that is absolutely incredible. And it's a testament to you. Do you and your staff, by the way, you and your staff have come in and taken a Michigan State program, which in the last several years hadn't been very I don't want to say hadn't been very good, but had been languishing a little bit, and you've turned it around in such a short period of time. You and your staff have done a phenomenal job. You specifically, Coach, you played at a really high level as well. Do you take a lot of the knowledge that you gained from those college coaches that you played for and worked for and have kind of kind of brought that up to Michigan State, the women's program here? And is that is that really what it is? Um, because, you know, a lot of days you said, like now – the soccer has changed from where it was 20 years ago when you and I were playing in college, but it's still, there's a lot of things that you can take from 20 years ago and bring forward with just a small adaption. Um, so it, it, is that kind of where you in college kind of thought, I'm going to go on to coach. I want to take some of these philosophies that I'm learning and bring it uh, into my, um, into your thinking when you coach. Yeah. I, I mean, I've certainly been fortunate and not just in college with the coaches that I had, but, but even back in high school and youth, um, you know, we had some incredible club teams uh, with, with a really young coach uh, named Tomas Olivier that, that went on to coach collegiately at Marshall on the men's side, um, did some really big things for us, uh, played around and played with some incredible players. You know, you may have had Chad Wiseman at Western Michigan on. He's a good friend of mine still to this day. Uh, we grew up playing soccer and basketball with and against each other. I won't tell you who won most of those games. 
Uh, and then, uh, you know, my high school coaches, I mean, in basketball, I had some, some Lansing legends, uh, and Rod Watts, Carlton Valentine, Chris Ferguson, that all coached, uh, were incredible legends here in the Lansing area. Mm -hmm. Nick Archer, the winningest high school boys coach, uh, well, winningest coach, I'm not sure if it's boys or, or, or winning this period, but sure. you know, Nick Archer and another Spartan, uh, that, you know, was an incredible high school coach at East Lansing high school for many, many years. And then Scott Frying college in particular, um, you know, we went to a final four my sophomore year. We were the first Michigan school since the sixties to make a final four in any division. Wow. Um, you know, Scott uh, went on to coach at Messiah college, winning multiple national championships on the women's side. So I've learned a lot from the people around me Been blessed to play with and against some incredible players uh, along the way that have helped pave this. And the, the game goes in, in cycles, you know, like it's wild to me when you and I played, everyone was playing four, four, two sweeper stopper, everybody with outside yep. mid. Yep. And then everything transitioned to um, eventually some four, three, three or a version of it, right? Yep. A four, two, three, one, a four, five, one, however you want to look at it. Yep. For, for decades. Now, guess who's playing a four, four, two again? Your yes. soccer team at Michigan State. Love Most it. That's, I, got, I, I have this conversation with people all the time. And I always ask, why are people not going back to a four, four, two? It is a in simple formation. It works. How come we can't do it? Uh, that you can have that so many made my month knowing this. <laughs> Absolutely made my month knowing that you guys play four four two or or a variation of four four yep. two depending on the game. That yep. I cannot be more happy right now. Yep, and it's a great thing both in and out of possession. You know, you can play in a box, a diamond, uh, yep. flat across. Uh, obviously, we're flat at the back now. The sweeper stopper days have have died in the four back system at least. Yep. But um, who knows? Maybe we'll see that. That's the next variation coming. We just don't see it yet. Yep. All right, so you guys have had great success, but it's not done yet. You're now entering into the Big Ten tournament as a number one seed. And then after that, obviously, the NCAA tournament. Have you guys set goals? Have the players set goals? Have you talked about where this where this is going to go? It's obviously because it could go far the way you guys have been playing. And as that defensive unit stands up and continues to 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 be accounted for. Yeah, I mean, I've never been one uh, to set, you know, to give projections of what a team could be, uh, frankly, like in goal setting setting out to, to win a championship or win the big 10 tournament or make the NSA tournament, I think are, they're not as, um, they're not as efficient a goal setting process in my opinion, because there's a lot of things like we talked about, particularly in our sport, you can't control. You can be the dominant team over and over and over again and not have that achieved. And then you feel like you failed to meet your goals when really you've grown incredibly and maybe achieved more in some of those moments. So for us, this isn't uh, as we enter big 10 uh, tournament play, our goal is not to, to win it. Uh, I think that's one of the things that will set us up well here uh, in the postseason is that our goal is always to be the best we can every day, make sure we're getting better in, in a, a number of areas, both individually and as a team. When you keep that focus, I think it allows you to stay level headed when the stakes get higher, yeah. uh, whether that's playing nationally ranked opponents as we've had success against, or we're talking play in the big 10 tournament. Uh, you know, I'll back that up by saying like, I want to win the big 10 tournament. Yeah. Our team's hungry to win the Big Ten tournament. That would be our first here also. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not what the end game goal is uh, in terms of our daily preparation. Focus on the day at hand, be our best, uh, recover, get sleep, get back up the next morning and approach it with the same vigor that you did the day before. Absolutely love that message. Love the message you're giving to the kids and, and drawing through that program. I do want to mention last year, you had a total of 18 players who earned academic all Big Ten honors. So not only were you guys doing putting in the work and getting the accolades on the field, but you were getting them off the field as well. That has got to be something that when recruits look at your program, you're winning on the field and you guys are winning in the classroom. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing that, that you're able to get the, the, the kids in this program to do such good work on the field and in the, and in the classroom. Cause that's tough. Yeah. To have the well-rounded experience and do it here uh, with as elite as, as Michigan state as an institution has become academically, uh, and these are not kids taking slough, you know, fluff majors. These are kids taking kinesiology and pre-med and part of the Eli Broad business program and even part of the honors college. So they're, they've got a lot on their plate uh, and they're still able to focus and, and ha highly perform on the soccer field. They're obviously doing that in the classroom. Uh, we had one of the top three GPAs, I think, in the athletic department last year over a 3.5. Wow. Uh, and that also showed not just in the Big Ten, but in the region. You know, we had, I think, four different United Soccer Coaches Scholar All-Region players. Uh, Lauren Kozel was uh, first-team All-America, Scholar All-America last year for United Soccer Coaches. 
So, you know, we talked earlier about work ethic, like when some of your best players have the best work ethic, you can bring everybody else along. When the very best goalkeeper in America is also a scholar all America, uh, I think it shows the intention uh, behind what we do. Absolutely. Coach, that is something you uh, should be immensely proud of uh, on the field and off the field work these kids are putting in. Again, congratulations uh, uh, on winning the Big Ten this year, the first in the women's program history for the soccer. It, it's amazing. I can't be more happy for you guys and happy as an alumni. And you have made my, you, may, you might have made my year by telling me you guys play 4-4-2 and it's possession based <laughs> and you don't punt. Oh my gosh. Coach, Thank you so much. We wish you well in the Big Ten tournament, and we wish you well into the NCAA tournament and for future success in the program. Appreciate it so much. Being a fellow Spartan, we probably should sign off correct. Go green. Go right. Go white. <laughs>